Welcome to another video. My goal for this video is to make this very saturated video as short as possible. We're gonna talk about 20 niche fragrance brands, some of my favorite niche fragrance brands that I think are worth your money. And we're gonna talk about why, and then I'm gonna to try to breeze through probably about 40 fragrances, again, as quickly as I can. So first I wanna get a few things out of the way. It goes without saying, if you are truly interested in any of the fragrances I'm talking about or any of the brands I'm talking about, get a discovery set. Do not go out and blind buy these fragrances. You very well may be disappointed, and if you do that and you are disappointed, you can't take it out on me. Also, please listen carefully to the words I'm about to say. If you didn't hear what I just said, if you didn't care about that, then please listen. If your favorite niche brand is not in this video, it is for one or more of the following reasons. I haven't tried the brand. I have not tried any of their offerings. I haven't tried enough of their offerings to get a accurate perspective on the brand itself and to really make an assessment. None of the offerings I've tried from the brand have moved me as something new and interesting. So the three criteria that I'm gonna lay out as brands that make this video are the ones that I think a lot of you guys are looking for when you're buying niche. They are as follows. Number one, quality. Now this is quite subjective, but I think you know it when you smell it and see it. There's a smoothness, there's a cohesiveness to how the ingredients come together. And also, we're talking about presentation, the bottle, the box, but mostly the bottle. When you hold it in your hand, there's a beautiful feel. Touch plays a very important role to the niche experience. Number two is performance. I know so many of you guys care about this. This is a deal breaker for so many of you. It's not for me, but a lot of you guys say that if you're spending a lot of money, the fragrance better last and these last. We're not talking about beast mode all the way, some of them might be. We're mostly talking about longevity. Does it last on the skin for the day? And finally, we're talking about uniqueness. This explains itself. Interesting scent profiles. Ultimately, I believe that if you go all in on any of these brands, assuming that you love the scent, you get what you pay for. Let's dive right into it. So what I've done here is I've chosen two fragrances for most of these brands, some I only chose one. And they happen to be some of my favorites from the brand and they also happen to be one that works in the warmer weather, one that works in the cooler weather for the most part. First is Roger Parfums. We're talking about 1819 Burlington or Burlington 1819 I think is what it is and Reckless. This is great for warm weather. This is like citrusy, boozy, warm, spicy, cumin kind of fragrance. There's a kind of a stink to it that's actually really beautiful in the sun. Reckless is a gorgeously warm, spicy, woody fragrance. Pretty robust, pretty intense, but very elegant. Argos, Brivido de la Caccia, means thrill of the chase. Green, smoky, woody, leathery, sharp, pretty fresh, great for the warm weather. And then we have their newest Adonis Awakens. This is a roasted, sweet, rich, dark rose. Gorgeous stuff. We have a little discount code for Argos down in the description, as always. Amouage, Beach Hut Man, green, robust, woody, very, very green. Did I mention it's green? Very minty, kind of old school smelling. We have Overture, not for everyone, animalic, spicy, boozy, sweet and warm and resinous, totally night out and luxury stuff, very, very grown, very elegant. Zaharoff, not an overtly summery scent by any means, but I have worn it in the summer and it's done okay. There are better ones for the summer from the brand. Signature Rose, I have to mention it because it's probably one of my absolute favorites from the brand. A rose fragrance for rose lovers and rose haters. It's a rose incense. And then we have their signature Tabak, one of the most unique but super wearable and kind of versatile tobacco fragrances on the market. Coming from BDK. I don't love all the fragrances I've tried from them, but the ones that I have tried and enjoy are interesting. They last a while. And the first one we're gonna talk about is Gris Charnel. This is a fan favorite. This is a very special scent. This is kind of juicy fig with black tea with dusty, smooth, creamy sandalwood, a little bit of a sweet vanilla in there. Beautifully unisex stuff. Great for day or night wear, honestly. Pretty versatile for being so unique. Tabac Rose, a very robust tobacco and rose fragrance with some fruitiness from plum with a warm, spicy quality to it. It is sweet, it is a little bit dusty. It is earthy, but it is rich and floral as well. From Killian, 
For the warm weather, I like Apple Brandy on the Rocks, one of the newest releases here. Very, very woody, honestly. Way more woody than I was expecting. No real apple in here, but it does kind of smell like a crisp apple. A little bit boozy, very, very woody. Lots of cedar wood in here, very dry. Great for the nighttime. And then we have probably my favorite from the brand so far. This is Straight to Heaven. Very unique scent, very polarizing. You gotta love earthy, damp patchouli with dried fruits with boozy rum. A little bit of a sweet vanilla in there. Very different. From Amarud. You don't hear much about this brand on YouTube. Lunar Vetiver, absolutely one of my favorite vetiver fragrances. Spicy, green, fresh, grassy, woody vetiver with a little bit of a warm, sweet heart. And then we have Golden Oud, very luxurious, a sweet caramelized Oud, very rich, very regal. From Mimo, I can't say that I love both of these equally, but they're both very solid. They check the boxes. This is Sintra. This is a white floral fragrance with a bit of a lactonic, creamy, rich, milky quality, almost like a marshmallow, but it does have a bit of an orangey quality too from Neroli, from Orange Blossom. This is African leather, probably a hallmark of the house, many people's favorites. Very robust, very exotic smelling, spicy, resinous, kind of dry and arid leather, but very smooth, very, very elegant. We have a twofer here, two different houses, Ganymede. The only fragrance from this house, Marc Antoine Barrois, that I actually own, but it is a standout, it is stunning. Those of you who've tried it and loved it, you know what I mean. Very fresh, but very different, unusual. May not be for everyone, but if you love it, you love it. One of the most versatile fragrances in my collection that is still a little bit different from MFK. I do love MFK. This is Gentle Fluidity Silver. This is sweet and warm and ambery, but also quite fresh and sharp, almost like gin with juniper berry. And there are others from the brand that I do love that I don't have. I have a few others that are okay to me, but ones like Grand Soir and Oud Satin Mood, those are fantastic. We have from the house of Zerzhoff for the heat, one of the best summer fragrances you can get for money that's going to check all the boxes. This is Renaissance, love it. This is minty, citrusy, kind of creamy in a way, but it's mostly very, very bright, very natural smelling and very strong, also quite green. And then for the Cooler weather, I do enjoy Alexandria too. It's kind of a different take on a rose oud. Very powdery, sweet, a little bit designery in terms of profile, but definitely niche in terms of quality. Lovely scent, easy to wear. I get some good feedback. Teo Cabanel, beautiful French house. I don't really have a bona fide warm weather scent here. I do have a few, but they're not my favorites from the brand. These are my favorites here. We have Kassar. Not for everyone, this is kind of an animalic leather and oud. A little bit like Dior's leather oud, but way more toned down, way more wearable. And then we have Ooh La La, perfectly unisex. A very unique take with spicy, warm, leathery saffron, hazelnut, some iris making it kind of buttery. I think it's an orris, so it's a little bit buttery, creamy, smooth, warm and cozy, beautiful stuff. Chris Collins. The only bottle that I have, but I've tried several others and they are wonderful. I need to get more in my collection, but I do love Oud Galore. You guys already know, a perfect Oud Rose, creamy, buttery, luxurious, smells expensive. That's enough. You know, go just try it. Why haven't you tried it yet? Try it. From the house of Nishane, they have a lot of wonderful stuff. It was hard to pick only two, but for the warm weather, I love B612. I've been wearing this lately and really enjoying it. Actually lasts quite well for a fresher fragrance. Has some legs. It is kind of a modern take on the barbershop fougere genre and doesn't smell like a barbershop at all. It is just based on that structure, but with different constituents. And then we have Neff's A beautifully opulent fragrance that is very different. I think it is kind of a rose oud, but has a very rich boozy quality. There is some beautiful vanilla in here. It is fruity, I think with like fig, almost like a peach or apricot. Incredible fragrance. The House of Javoy, a fragrance house that is very polarizing for many people. For the heat, I do enjoy L'Art de la Guerre. This is a very rich, rhubarb fragrance. It is fresh, it is a little bit sharp and tart with a fruitiness in a way, but it is also quite oak mossy. Very rich and oak mossy, almost like a sheep in a way where it does have this very kind of classical masculine base to it, but ultimately pretty fresh. And then we have Incident Diplomatique, my first love from the house, one that not everyone will love. Smoky, has the illusion of a booziness in there, very vetivery, so it's very earthy, woody. 
grassy but so smooth and almost smells wet in a way. Rich and smooth for being quite earthy and smoky. That is Incident Diplomatique, that is Javoy. Okay, from the house of Mas Milano, Italian brand. I've tried so many of their offerings and they have some great stuff, but the bottles that I own and enjoy are homage to Hemingway, a great, easy, light, gingery vetiver fragrance that does last. It is spicy, again, quite gingery, earthy and grassy, but nowhere near as dark and smoky as the vetiver that's in Incident Diplomatique. And then my favorite from the brand is still Russian tea, the most transportive fragrance in my collection. It is black tea, it is mint, it is black pepper, it is raspberry, it has a honeyed quality. It does smell like a warm cup of black tea that's sweetened and has some fresh mint in it. Beautiful stuff. Sarah Baker, definitely worth giving a sample to this whole house because some stunning releases here with a couple different collections. And then we have these two. This is Greek Keys, great for the warmth. I've talked about it recently. Transports me to the shoreline of the Mediterranean. I can smell the fresh sea air without being marine or salty or fishy. And I can also smell like creamy sea foam. It's very transportive stuff, very beautiful. And then we have Charade. This stuff is ridiculous. It has a sheep vibe to it. There's this very rich oak moss but it's also quite floral and heady with tuberose. Lots of honey in here, very sweet and sticky, very vetivery, has a lot of woody vetiver as it dries on my skin. This is utterly beast mode. This one, you gotta look out, do not overspray it. It is crazy, but beautiful house. From another French house that I love, Mikalef and Mikalef. A lot of great stuff, but this one I do enjoy. This is called 06130 Gras Pour Homme. This smells a little bit like a classic men's fougere. It is herbaceous. It is creamy in a shaving foam kind of way. It is very fresh, maybe citruses, woods, and very just again clean smelling, masculine smelling, professional smelling. And then you guys have heard me talk about this one, how much I love it. That's your toxic. If you don't love this one, I'm sorry for you. But those of you who have got your nose on it, you know how sexy this stuff is. Kind of like Leighton, from Par From The Marley, just sexier, more interesting to me, a little bit edgier as well. Love this house. Another Italian brand, Pantheon Roma, some absolutely strong beast mode fragrances. And we have two here, we have Cosi Blue. This is a very relaxing incense fragrance that is meant to depict the sky in a lot of Italian Renaissance paintings. Very, very interesting way that they use incense to do that. Very, very calming, but robust. And then the Raffaello, after the painter, this is a very interesting woody leather fragrance that has a distinctive wearable quality to it. It's sweet with tonka bean. It has an interesting woody teak wood vibe and it is a little bit leathery, but in a suede like way, but extremely powerful. Just look out, very elegant, simple, but different. And finally, this is in no particular order here from Fragrance Dubois. I wanted to choose Sara, but that stuff is so expensive and it's hard for me to truly recommend it to everyone. But if you're interested in a very, very high quality Oud Rose fragrance that is so luxurious, you must try it. But a fresher offering that I do love is Oud Blue Intense. This is fresh for the summer. It almost does smell a little bit blue, but without being stereotypically blue in terms of its elements. It's not overly citrusy or herbs or aromatic. It's mostly like fresh resins, maybe with a touch of citrus in there, but it has a, a rich resinous balsamic quality that's a little bit sweet. It actually comes across quite fresh and versatile but still very different and still very much niche. And then Cannabis Blue. This, I almost didn't choose it, but this is one of those fragrances that is so intoxicating. I can't get away from it. I don't wear it that much because it literally does smell like cannabis. It smells like bud, but in the most unique way, it has a little bit of a sweet creaminess to it. it. has a little bit of a medicinal quality, maybe some eucalyptus or something in there. Very interesting, very different, but you have to like cannabis. It's kind of sour and pungent, but well balanced with other things. That's Fragrance Dubois. Okay, that's gonna do it for me. Let me know if you've tried and enjoy any of these brands down in the comments below. Again, if your favorite brand is not here, please refer back to the beginning of the video as to why. Again, doesn't mean that they're a bad brand. It just means that they didn't make the cut for this video. But if you enjoy them, please enjoy them. Nonetheless, thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.